Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over a mistake I made. Well, sort of a mistake. This I was basically, when I was showing how to change custom graphics between layers, I was using the method that I have been using since I started using KiCad. There was only one way to really change stuff between the silkscreen layer, which is the default layer you import at, and another layer like the copper layer. And so I was showing you how to do that. I showed you how to edit the file and change the layer on a polygon basis. That's just what I knew. Uh, what's changed now is the method is much, much easier. So I learned this from the YouTube comments, so thank you everyone who's watching and uh, commenting and, and showing us how to do this stuff. I'm going to show you how to do this because I just learned this yesterday. Uh, so let's take a look at this is the file we made. If you do remember, uh, this is silk screen and then this is copper with exposed solder mask. Uh, and so this is exposed copper here and then um, uh, silk screen up there. Okay, so let's go into, uh, let's go and edit the silk screen one first. Okay, we mouse over, hit E. Now we're going to go to Footprint Editor, and this should pull up the Footprint Editor here. Okay, now the extremely difficult, quote unquote, method of doing this is you select, you mouse over, you hit E, and you change the layer. <laughs> and we're done. At least to give you a warning about that. Um, and that's literally it. And that is. Uh, that is how easy it actually can be. And so as we saw in the, the modification of the files, you know, these are all separate different uh, polygons that are, are, uh, are here, right? And so we can modify these as needed on, on the text side, but we don't, we don't have to do that. And that's kind of the key thing here. Um, and so we can change some of these to uh, uh, silk screen, right? We get to put stuff on the front, we put stuff on the back and we can see how it all looks. Oh, we have to actually update it. So if we want to update it into the board, we have to do that. Now if we go to the board, so now it looks like that, and this is what the 3D model looks like. So we have copper underneath, we have uh, solder mask exposed here, and we have silk screen here. We can also do things like this. We can, uh, we should be able to duplicate. This is not the editor, sorry. <laughs> so we can duplicate, put it right on top. That's pretty much on top there. There we go, and then we should be able to change the th the um, change the one that we layered on top of the other. That's another thing I learned from the comments here. And now we should have uh, so we've updated this into the board. We should now have the copper and the uh, exposed solder mask over top of it. And so we can basically in one footprint now we can do uh, what we have here. So thanks to Steve for that one. Uh, I forgot the name of the other person who pointed out that we could do this in the first place. So I, I've been learning some of this stuff in the, in, uh, in the short time that I've learned this as well. But you see how much easier it is now. Basically, clicking and changing layer is just mousing over, hitting E, and you're good to go. Now, one thing you will notice is that some of the things are not enabled. Most, uh, most notably is the edge cuts layer. So if you want to think, change something to the edge cuts layer, you do have to do that manually still. And that's for good reason. The edge cuts is kind of a finicky thing, right? You think about this. Let's just select this shape here. Think about this shape. Um, you know, this is basically what that when you have an edge cuts layer, you're basically defining where a, a, a milling bit is going to go around the edge of your board. Or if you have it in the in the inside in, inside your board, you know how you're going to cut out inside the board, and you need to make sure you have you know a, a, something that a hundred mil uh, bit could actually cut out. Um, and and so it's a little bit more finicky, I think. Um, you know, it, a lot of board houses can do custom shapes. They don't have problems with custom shapes, but you do need to be more careful about it. And it's definitely not the default behavior. Most people doing their boards and doing custom custom shapes are probably going to be starting with square or similar kind of shapes to start with. And then eventually they move on towards custom shapes. A lot of people I know, they come in and they, they actually draw. So they bring in a graphic. They draw this, this kind of shape over top of it. That ensures the polygon is closed. However, this is actually a much, uh, much improved version of importing with actual polygons here. So now that there are polygons, it should be a better import process. And so hopefully we'll show that in a future video as well. So uh, this is a much better method. And I very much thank all of the people that are watching and commenting. I do read your comments. Thank you for that. Um, this was a, a method that I didn't know about, actually. You know, between four and five, I thought I thought it was still you had to go and edit the files. Like I said, some things you still have to do that for, for the edge cuts layer and things like that. Sometimes you do have to do some hacks, but I, I really, I'm appreciative to all the developers that are out there that are improving things like this. And uh, as as of yet two days ago, three days ago, I'm not sure when it happened, but uh, KiCad 5.1 was released, and this may have changed again. So uh, we'll be making more videos about KiCad 5.1 and KiCad 5.0, uh, and hopefully showing some of the differences here. 
So if you have any questions, you can always go over to the forum for this video. That's forum.contextelectronics.com. Or if you want to talk about KiCad in general, go to forum.kicad.info, and we can talk more about the features here and stuff coming in KiCad 5.1 and beyond. If you also want to, you can join us at KiCon 2019. That's happening April 26th and 27th in Chicago, and we'll be talking all about this kind of stuff. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.